And now we want to, to prove the saddle, which is of course where the cross slide mates. So I'll coat up the now finished cross slide on the knee uh, on the side and use that as a template. And uh, <clears throat> Put it down there, slide it back and forth, and uh, we will see now a phenomenon that can be a little bit uh, t tells of a wrong tale, really. It's false. It seems to be very good, apart from a little bit here and here. But when you put it down here and measure, we can zero the indicator here, for instance. There, just going back. Okay, and then we move it across. You see it's going high and high, and I see it's going low again. You can do it this way also. It's if I see the indicated there in the middle as being the midpoint. You can see it's going a little bit low there and a little bit low here and the same repeats itself here and why is that yes of course it's where on each side as the cross slide moves back and forth it wears down the, the extremes extremities like this it goes like this and when I now apply blue from this to this, I just am re really rubbing along a, a curved surface. So um, what seems to appear as, as contact all over and it could be falsely then interpreted and then just started off from there, must be verified by the measurement here, of course, with um, in this case, then verify that I have approximately flat underneath. Therefore, to prove such a piece, I like to use a straight edge, of course, and then avoid rocking it. Just carefully finding the high spot in the middle here also, and thereby Proving you can then easily then see or f and feel that it's high in the middle. That's easier than by using both, uh, at least in my in my thinking. And then don't press down, but on the high spot. So. That's the proof of the pudding, isn't that the expression? That this is, it is high in the middle. We can turn it around and do the same here. And I reckon I can be able to prove the same here. Namely that it is high in the middle. Set it down. Oops. Feel. And see. Just push down on there. Okay, not so much, but at least I see that that this is probably false marking, and then here is the main high spot. So that's where I, of course, will scrape down. <clears throat> and for the dovetail, or the uh, to get into the dovetail. Of course, I will relieve this so that I have a, a square cut a groove down there, thereby 
avoiding at least to a degree hitting the opposite part um, but you you it is preferable to use than probably as a, like a glimmer version of the biax uh, blades or also then grind it so that you can get down how good it it shows but this is ground so that it's slimmer there thereby we can get into the dovetails at an angle like this easier um, difference of course between this is that these stubby ones are much stiffer and not really um, recommended it's just that I have this which is rounded off but uh, it's much better uh, to use the more springy longer ones which will flex and be well, they are much easier to to handle so avoid these stubby ones so whatever scraping method at least verify that is not high in the middle and uh, now relieved it a little bit in the middle actually and then it feels better now it hinges now over here but mostly there so i may have relieved it a little bit too much See it moves up over here <coughs> a little bit here. <coughs> I just lift it so and try to feel, and now it's also more even here. I'm actually forcing it to. hit on the on the outer edges more than in the middle and uh, here you see the near finished uh, saddle this is scraped uh, somewhat deeper and the way I achieved this was by using the shorter of the blades here shown um, both shorter and uh, thicker shank meaning this is much much stiffer this will at least in my eyes demand a more forceful down pressure uh, hence you have deeper marks and this is to avoid chatter chatter will be of course when you skip like this in your forward stroke at least in my eyes i found that this now if i use this will skip much light much easier especially using the machine scraper i get then chatter which is crosswise marks in the longitudinal direction so to avoid that i push down harder and uh, this will inevitably uh, lead to to a deeper scraping as can be seen so if I zero in on a high spot here, let's see, find one here. This will inev inevitably lead to larger deviations. So a little bit more than what you found on the, using the, the longer shanked or bendable blade. Uh, another thing is that when doing this show you that you will also get uh, let me see where was it what I mean by this marks but you see them here these marks here they are the somewhat deeper, or some of the deeper marks from rough scraping.
what I can consider than the, the rough scraping blade. Or well, here you can see them better. These marks here. They are of course to be avoided. Um, they are then the remains of the deeper rough scraping with the stiffer blade. <clears throat> here I'm blowing up the, first the small pool. I distribute here. And I take off the excess with my finger and then I invert it or put it onto the cross slide. Oh, sorry, saddle. Not sliding it in, but keeping it up like to the dull tail and setting it down and then start sliding. Up again and out. And then inspecting. So I see I'm a little bit shallow in here. And I have fairly good distribution there. Along the length. So a little bit here would do it, I guess. There is a tendency to scrape harder on the outside, so at least I have avoided that. So one more scrape and you see it's better. I have a little shy area over here. And I could of course get more points. But this is with the cross slide as a template. And I'm fairly pleased.